What is going on friends and welcome back to the Minecraft Hub channel. Today we are creating a new world, a brand new world, and this is going to be the Minecraft Hub world. This world is going to be a new series on the Minecraft Hub channel and basically what we're going to be doing is a complete build guide if you couldn't tell that from the title. We're going to be doing builds from the very start of Minecraft. We're going to be working on starter houses all the way up to an eventual mega base project. Now I hope to make this a really fun series. Uh, it's definitely going to take a lot of work. I have a lot of plans for it so far. But today we are starting off with just a simple getting started in this Minecraft world video and we'll of course finish it off with beginning our starter house in this brand new world. Now this series is going to be quite long because we have a lot of projects that I want to work on throughout the series and we'll go over those projects at the end of this video. But to start off, we are just going to go ahead and start collecting some wood, some other resources, and then we are going to start work on our first starter house of the series. Now, the idea for this series actually came to me because a lot of people in our comments uh, keep saying things like, I'm not very good at building, or I've been building for this many years and it's just not working out. I'm not being able to build like people that I watch in these YouTube videos. And so I figured why not do a series where we actually explore how to go about improving your building skills because I need to improve mine as well. There's always room for improvement in building in Minecraft and throughout this series I'm going to be working to improve my skills. Now actually just going around where I just spawned in on this uh, island, if you didn't notice there were actually two ocean monuments and we have a mushroom biome really close to this starter spawn which is absolutely amazing. That's going to help out a lot in some of our later projects. We're going to be transforming an ocean monument at some point and of course we'll go ahead and do a build on the mushroom island as well. It's a very small one so I don't know how much uh, we'll be able to do on the island but we will definitely do a project there sometime throughout this series. Now this is a survival world not hardcore so I can die in the series but I'm going to try not to for as long as I can. So far throughout this first episode I managed to survive the entire time and we got a lot of work and resources gathered. So starting off here we actually managed to find a uh, shipwreck just off the coast from spawn in between uh, the spawn island and the mushroom island. I went ahead and explored the mushroom island but had to get out of there quite fast because there are a ton of drowned guarding this thing right now. Luckily I was able to swim off and avoid death on that island but we are still going through our first night so there are plenty of other terrors out there that we are going to have to avoid. I managed to pick up some golden items uh, from this nether portal ruin that we found here and I basically have some leather and gold armor to start us off and that's going to be super helpful going against these mobs in the first nights of Minecraft. Now I decided to use this little cave that I swam into here as just kind of a starter point to get some resources like iron and some food smelted up. Uh, I did unfortunately run into a creeper at this point, but barely managed to survive with just one heart left. It was definitely very risky. I'd made an idiotic play that let the creeper get way too close to me, but thankfully because of the leather armor I was wearing and the water and blocks in between us, I managed to not die right there. We managed to get an iron pick pretty quickly into this new world, which is great. I hate mining with stone and wood, it just takes so long, so I love getting an iron pick as soon as I can in the game. And also we're going to go ahead and keep those starter tools to make a museum at some point later in this series as well. I always think it's a really fun and creative idea when people create museums uh, that show off some of the first things they got in their world, so we're going to be doing something similar. We're going to be finding things like our first tools, our first diamonds, things like that to put in the museum and we'll definitely keep track of those in a chest separate from everything else so that hopefully we don't lose those items before we're actually able to make a museum. Now, personally, I absolutely love resource gathering in Minecraft and I love doing all that before I even get a build going in Minecraft. So the first thing I always do in Minecraft is start up a farm so I get some food going and I also do a ton of mining and resource gathering before I start building. 
Now this series is gonna be a little different. It is entirely build focused. We'll of course do some redstone projects and things like that throughout the series, but it is going to be build heavy. So I am going to be doing a lot more building than I usually do right off the bat here in Minecraft. And we'll actually be working on a starter house as soon as I get this farm going. Now I did manage to find a few potatoes in the shipwreck, so those are what I got planted up first. And then I started collecting seeds from the surrounding area so that I could get some wheat down as well. Wheat is absolutely the most inefficient thing in my opinion. It takes the same amount of time as potatoes basically, and you need three of them to make bread. I hate it, but until I have more potatoes, I will go ahead and farm it. And also, wheat looks great uh, in fields. Uh, so I definitely want to use it later on for different build projects. Uh, then, as I was uh, doing that farming, the second night of Minecraft came up and I decided to go and explore this village over here and hopefully find a bed so that I could start sleeping through these nights. Managed to find a library in this one so I will be able to get some bookshelves pretty quickly which is great because I also love getting enchanted really quickly and bookshelves are just great for decoration. Barely managed to avoid this creeper right here. It still did blow up, but not enough to damage any of the crops, and I was still able to get all that lovely wheat right there. And I also picked up some hay bales from this village as well, so that I could get some early game bread, which was going to be super useful. Hay bales are absolutely great for getting some first bread in this series. That way you're actually able to eat and go mine without having to worry about your farm right away. I did also go ahead and trap these villagers in their houses with some torches on the inside so that they wouldn't despawn or get killed by any mobs while I was doing everything else and hopefully were able to use them later in the series for different villager projects. Now that I've had all this done, I decided it was time to go mining and get some more resources. I needed coal, iron, and of course, everybody's favorite, I needed diamonds. Now, I said that this series was going to be basically a learning process for me as well as the viewers uh, in building and basically everything Minecraft. One of those things for me right now is mining. Mining completely changed in the 1.19 update and I honestly haven't played that much Minecraft since this update came out. So it's basically time for me to start learning how to mine in this game again. I know that iron and coal are more likely to spawn, spawn in higher elevations, especially mountains now, and that a lot of people are doing that, but I wanted to find a way to find all those items while actually just mining. And I discovered that, honestly, it's not that different if you just go caving or even if you find a mine shaft, you're still going to find plenty of iron and coal, and you really don't have to worry about it too much. Now I imagine strip mining is a whole other story, but we'll get to that later. We actually managed to find our first diamond in this mine shaft right here. This is our first diamond of the series, and unfortunately, it is the only diamond in the spawn right here. I absolutely hate when I only get one diamond, but I am happy that I finally found my first diamond in this game very quickly uh, at the start here. Anyways, I continued my way down the mine shaft and I actually found a huge cavern that led into uh, this area down here, which I think looks incredible. It definitely could be very interesting to do a build down here. I've seen a lot of build ideas in these huge dark caverns, so maybe we'll try to do that at some point throughout this series, but we will definitely have to work on getting it lit up and some less mobs down here because it can get pretty sketchy. Now I went ahead and just started touring around this entire cavern, exploring all the caves and every offshoot that was around here, and I managed to find a pretty solid amount of diamonds for a just quick trip down to the mines. I think I came back with about 15 diamonds, and while I was down there I also made a diamond pick and a diamond axe. So definitely a good first haul, just mining the diamonds that I find just on the surface in this cavern. This honestly seems like the way to go for finding diamonds. I found all of these very quickly. I think I spent about uh, an hour, maybe less mining. So the fact that I was able to find 15 diamonds in that amount of time, while also only being down in this part where the diamonds are visible for probably about half that time, means that this is just a pretty great way to find diamonds now. This is definitely completely different than how I used to mine. I used to just go down to about Y11 and do a strip mine and find diamonds that way, but now I think just caving, which is a lot more fun than strip mining anyway, is definitely the way to go. I also went ahead and stumbled upon a 
uh, amethyst geode down here as well and I went ahead and got a stack of each smooth basalt and a stack of calcite as well. I figured both of these blocks would be great for building our starter base. Not really too sure what we're going to do yet but I figured that it's great to have those options anyway. While I was going ahead and making my diamond pickaxe, I actually got attacked by four zombies at once. Luckily, I was made able to manage to fend them off and we're able to continue our mining trip. Now you can see my inventory is getting pretty full. So after a few more diamonds, we're definitely going to have to cut this trip uh, and go back up to the surface and start work on our starter base. And of course, since I was down here and had a diamond pick, I went ahead and collected some obsidian as well. Went ahead and just collected 14. That's enough to make a nether portal and also an enchantment table, which are going to be essential in my early days of Minecraft. But after I got that, I went ahead, headed back up to the surface, dumped all my stuff in the chest, finished off collecting some resources for the starter house and also going ahead and uh, cleaning up the farm a bit as well. And then now it's time to work on the starter house. Now, the actual goal of this series is to go ahead and do a bunch of different building uh, in a bunch of different places. So we're not going to be doing one starter house in this series. We're going to be doing multiple starter houses in this series. We're actually going to be doing a starter house in every single biome of Minecraft. Within reason, of course, we don't need to duplicate just based off of the different types of mountains or anything like that. But we will definitely be going and exploring different build options uh, in all of those different biomes. Now, something I want to explore here as well is the building process. A lot of people think that builds just come together like that, and sometimes they do come together just really quickly and easily. But more often than not, building takes a lot of time, adjustments, and really just making sure that it looks good. A lot of different variations, a lot of different testing to actually get a build looking good. So I kind of want to show that process in this series here, and that's kind of what we're starting with. So I decided after I saw this hill behind where I had actually set up my furnace and everything that this would actually be a great place to do a hobbit hole. Hobbit holes are great because you can dig just straight into the ground. You really only need to build an entrance uh, to the hobbit hole, possibly some windows, things like that. And then the rest of it is just going to be work on the end here. Now this is our plains biome starter build. And unfortunately I did get attacked by some phantoms while working on it. But since we're in the plains biome, I wanted to use items that we can actually find in the plains biomes or even the mines. So that's why I'm using oak, birch, and also uh, the calcite that we found down in the mine and I really want to show how much of this process went into building this because I changed so much throughout this build to make everything look just a little bit better. Now generally for a hobbit hole like this I'd love to have some darker wood it would definitely make this look a little better uh, a little bit of a better contrast but I decided since we are building in the plains biome I'm just going to stick with oak and birch because that's what you're going to be able to find nearby. And this is kind of the idea I came up with. I'm not a huge fan of it yet. We're definitely going to be doing some more work on changing up the entrance. But since I am very limited on resources at the start of this, we're just going to go ahead and stick with this entrance for right now and workshop it later on. What I did from here is I actually went ahead, settled for this, and went into the mountain and started working on the interior of this base. Now the interior is probably what took me the most time when making this video because I spent so much time doing and redoing everything on the interior because I just wasn't happy with how it was turning out. I started off with some birch floors. I turned my wood into slabs so that I could essentially double the amount of slabs uh, for the floor that I could use. Uh, working with not that much wood to start off, we of course can go and collect more, but just starting off, I wanted to be able to do this with as few blocks as possible to make it easy for every type of Minecraft player to build. Now this is really just a detail oriented build. We're not gonna be focusing on scale here. It's a starter house, it's supposed to be small, and we're gonna be working with a very small interior. Now something really simple that you can do just to add a little bit of texture and things like that to your floors and your walls, roofs, anything like that, is among the planks, just start throwing in some stripped logs or even some regular logs as well, depending on the texture and style that you wanna go with. It's a super simple, just small detail that you can add in that can really just change up the texture of your build and make it look very nice. 
Another problem with this build is going to be lighting. Lighting I actually haven't figured out still at this point because it's a very small area and it's going to be very difficult to light. Fortunately with the 1.19 update, Y level or sorry, light level zero is where mobs are going to spawn now. Previously, light level seven mobs would start spawning, but now we're at light level zero, so it's actually gonna be much easier to light this up. And I think we're actually gonna go about lighting it up once we start implementing the details into the walls, along the walls, and things like that. We're gonna be needing uh, lanterns on shelves, on bookshelves, things like that, and that's what's gonna make this look nice. Now you may notice as well that the floors and walls are switched now. I actually decided that the birch was a better fit for the walls and the oak a better fit for the floor, so I completely redid everything that I had done previously and got that fixed up. Unfortunately, as well with this hobbit hole, I did not plan very well on how big this mountain actually was. So it's gonna require some terraforming, but I figured terraforming was a great start to this series as well. Now what I decided to actually do was build the room size that I wanted, and we're actually gonna be building a bedroom. Now it looks quite large, but that outside layer of wood is going to be the walls, and then from there we're going to have to work with that small room and that's going to be the bedroom gonna have some starter storage some uh, things that we're gonna need at the beginning of our series but more than that it's just not going to fit and I decided to actually build this room up completely uh, minus the calcite in the roof and then go ahead and terraform the land around it to really work with this mountain now because of our low resources, we're actually not gonna completely terraform this yet. We're able to completely cover this and start making it look like more natural terrain, but we still probably have some more work to do on this area uh, once I finish all this up in order to actually make it blend in with the mountain completely. I also want to let what I did do uh, completely grass over just so I could tell a bit better if it was working for what I needed here to make this mountain still look natural. You can see, you can still see the dirt up there, but that's actually because I ran out of calcite and I'm gonna have to go back down and find another geode in order to continue on from there with the roof. This is basically all I was able to do at this point just because of my lack of resources, but it was actually perfect because we are basically out of time for this first episode. I still have a couple things I wanna talk about and that is the overall goals for this episode or for this series rather. This episode, I really want to show just my starting process of Minecraft, how I go about finding uh, my initial resources, getting a farm started and starting my starter base. And then from there, uh, I wanted to go over the building process of a starter base. And that's basically what we're gonna be doing throughout the rest of the series. Now, the next thing I wanted to show off before we finish this video is our to-do list for this series. The first thing, starter house in every biome. That's the biggest thing that I wanna to do to start off this series. Of course, we're gonna have things in between those episodes where we focus on other things like redstone builds we'll need or even uh, different farms, things like that, that are going to help us in the long run. The next thing that I wanna do after completing all of those starter houses is I wanna transform one of every structure. So we'll be working on an ocean monument base, we'll be transforming a nether fortress to some degree, we're going to focus on everything and every different type of build. And finally, what I want to do to finish off this series is a mega base. Now I really don't know, I have no plans for a mega base right now, so I'm going to start workshopping some ideas as we go throughout this series to figure out what I really want to do for that mega base, but we are going to make sure it is amazing and that you guys learn a lot from it as well so you guys can build your own mega bases. Anyways guys, that is all the time that we have for this first episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think of this series down below, and I'll see you next time.